So really, what is the um, base of cancer? How does cancer uh, develop in the first place? Well, we really have appreciated over the last 20 or 30 years that cancer is a cellular uh, disease that results from uh, derangements in control pathways that regulate cell number. Here you can see um, an, a nice illustration of how the human body is uh, comprised of functional units called cells, trillions of cells uh, in, in the body. And these cells are really organized in beautiful um, patterns when they're grown in culture, and as you'll see, are also very well organized uh, in situ. Here's an example of a section through the stomach where you can really appreciate the highly um, ordered structure of the tissue with the individual secretory cells relating to each other with apical and basal um, aspects with a nicely organized lumen with each of these um, secretory structures looking very similar to each other really illustrating that cells have information that establish uh, pattern and morphology and that they are receiving signals and controlling their architecture under normal uh, conditions. Things are very different in the case of tumors. And here you can see an, a lovely illustration showing the difference between normal mammary gland and uh, mammary tumor. In the top panel, you can see uh, mammary gland with the milk duct. And again, these cells are nicely organized uh, with the lumen here and the surrounding uh, stromal tissues. And look what happens in breast carcinoma. We've completely lost the architecture of the tissue. The cell number, if we were to analyze it, would be out of control. But fundamentally, the cells have lost their capacity to recognize signals from their surroundings and to acquire this highly ordered, um, differentiated uh, phenotype. The fundamental thing, the first thing that happens um, in the establishment of tumors is, of course, uh, derangement in the control of cell number. And cells uh, begin, as you can see in this diagram, to grow out of control, and that then disturbs the uh, architecture. And this um, growth loss of growth control can, can happen at a number of different levels, illustrated uh, schematically here. And I'll just touch on a couple of them today. You can, um, uh, tumor cells can acquire an insensitivity to um, anti-growth signals, to signals that normally constrain their proliferation. And an example of that is um, the inability to recognize that they're surrounded by other cells, their inability to really uh, detect or respond appropriately to environmental cues um, that normally would slow their, their growth. Um, a second example is that they can become uh, self-sufficient and not require uh, positive growth signals anymore. Normally cells divide only when there are growth factors present that activate signaling pathways that lead to proliferation and cell division. In tumors, many times uh, the cells have lost that need to have exogenous um, growth signals and they're sort of constitutively activated for the proliferation pathways. And finally, some recent um, work just in the last uh, 10 to 20 years has revealed that all of the changes in cell number that occur in cancers cannot be attributed just to regulation of proliferation, but rather another very important mechanism by which cell number is controlled is through a process called apoptosis or programmed cell death. And programmed cell death is um, a process that's used during development, it's used during normal tissue um, and organ maintenance. And if that process becomes curtailed in some way, cells that were, should normally die will fail to die, and of course that can also give rise to enhanced cell number. And this is also something that can um, cause cancer. Fundamentally, all of these behaviors of cells, the um, ability of cells to get signals from their environment, the ability of cells to interact and acquire this highly um, ordered architecture within tissues, is completely dependent on our genetic material, which really uh, controls cell behavior. And here you can see uh, the 
a diagram of a cell, where, or an image of a cell, uh, where, the, where the red illustrates the cytoskeleton, and here's the nucleus. And the nucleus, of course, contains all of the genetic material, 23 pairs of chromosomes, which represent or are comprised of uh, the genetic material DNA organized into units uh, called genes. And the Human Genome Project has um, led to an appreciation that humans have about 30,000 uh, protein coding genes. And you can see here that that effort has allowed us to appreciate not only what those genes are and what they encode, but also where they're located on each chromosome. So here are the sex chromosomes, the X and Y chromosomes, and here's a, um, a pattern that illustrates the distribution of the genes uh, on, those, on those two chromosomes. We now appreciate that it's alteration in genes, the genetic material that really is responsible for the early changes that lead to cancer. Normal genetic material in a healthy individual control, leads to control of um, cell growth and cell death and all of the behaviors of cells um, that I've described previously. And we now understand that it's lesions in the genetic material, the DNA, mutations in those genes that alter those important regulatory pathways and lead to excessive cell growth and ultimately uh, tumor, excessive cell growth or inadequate cell death and then the tumor. These genetic changes can be uh, inherited and passed from uh, parent to child or they can be acquired over time by exposure to chemical carcinogens, too much sunlight, um, etc.